It's Cliff with a little bit of run on Dixon. Dixon running high, leaving clean air low. So Hinchcliffe just kind of runs it in hard, takes the low line, and then just deals with it middle off the corner. Inside 10 to go at Iowa Speedway. Elio Castroneves continues to stretch his lead by more than three seconds now. Team Penske also poised potentially for their first win at Iowa Speedway. If he gets across the line with the checkered flags, there's going to be a lot of tears flowing out of the <laughs> eyes of Castro Neves, and you can guarantee he'll run straight for the fence. So let's hope he can hold it together here for the next eight laps. Well, it'll be well earned. He's driven flawlessly today. That track temperature now down to 107 degrees. It's cooling fast, and it really seems to advantage Castro Neves. He's going faster and faster than Hildebrand in second position. Cars are spread out now for him. He doesn't have a lot of traffic, so he can take his time. He's got a nice gap built up, almost four seconds now, and he doesn't have a lot of traffic, like I said, so he can afford to take his time now and not make any mistakes. Elio Castro Neves has led well over two-thirds of this race. 211 laps led today. We saw a similar beat down by Joseph Newgarden, even more so last year. James Hinchcliffe led well over 200 laps back in his win in 2013 here. Just watching those bright red gloves from Castro Neves. The car looks very well balanced. A lot of precision in the hands. Just driving to the limit of the front tires, not trying to force anything as Roger Penske looks on. I'm looking at the times right now. He's got Andretti in front of him. Andretti's running a 19-1 and Castro Neves a 19-5. So he really doesn't even have to pass him. He's got a big healthy lead now. It's down to 3.2 from 3.9. But he doesn't really have to push the issue now because the pace is kind of evened out for everybody. Three and a half laps to go for Elio Castro Neves. That's J.R. Hildebrand more than three seconds behind. Under three now for Spider-Man. You know, ever since Penske asked him to conserve tires, he's been working the high line, staying off the bottom, giving the tires a break with the longer radius, and it's really paid off. I think this win will mean a lot for Roger Penske, too. He and Elio have a very special relationship. They've worked together for so many years. Castro Neves is a lap and a half away from breaking the drought. His lead now at four seconds over second place. And we're poised for our ninth different winner of the season. Graham Rahal and Joseph Newgarden are still going at it for fifth position. White flag for Elio Castro Neves. Under a mile to go to win for the 30th time in his career. On the back stretch, J.R. Hildebrand is nearly four second in arrears. Castro Neves, two more turns to go. Checkered flag, win number 30. It stops a more than three year drought. And Castro Neves squarely is in the championship hunt. Seventeen laps led, and Elio Castro Neves wins for the first time since 2014. I wonder if he can remember how to climb. <laughs> well, I think he can remember how to climb, and like I said earlier in the race, I think this is going to open the floodgates again for him to start winning again. Because, like I said, when you go a long time, you start to question whether you can get the job done anymore. And he certainly got it done today. His team said you dominated. I would expect him. It's going to be a showdown between him and Dixon the rest of the year. The championship difference is eight points right now, but that's not on the mind of Elio Castro Neves. It's winning for the first time in three years. Listen to the crowd. said on the radio the one thing he wanted to do 
was find a fence to climb. And it is the first time since Detroit 2014 that he's had that opportunity hugging the Penske car for the first Penske win here at Iowa. Elio, we'll let you get your helmet off here, but we are dying to get your thoughts on finally making it here and climbing that fence. I wasn't the young as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, what a car. Hitachi Chevy, Hitachi Chevy was unbelievable. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, what a great car, what a great team. <laughs> ah. Ah. What can I say, man? <laughs> what, a, what a race, I'm speechless. I want to thank, obviously, RP and those guys, Hendrik. And my special, my engineer, my group number three, and my teammates, man, because we are working so hard together. But Hitachi Chevy was running, man, on rails. I mean, I'm talking about put on the outside. We had a little bit issue in the beginning, but um, after we set up the car, it's great. What a what a great feeling. It's the it's just like the first time, man. Woo! <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. Woo. Just before the start of the race. There was speculation you were asked about your future and your answer was what I need to do is win today and then win the championship. When you said that, did you think you had this good of a shot? <laughs> Listen, uh, we've been close so many times and finally uh, our luck was a little bit in our side. We didn't have a problem with the yellow car was on it. Uh, you know, everything what happened behind the scene is behind the scene. Uh, I'm just so so honored to be part of this organization. A great group of guys. So uh, now, TC, all the Penske drivers won, man. That's for you, man. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> now, it's a big day for the team as well. Obviously, you talk about each one of the drivers having a win. I know how emotional you are. But for a team like Penske, <laughs> here come the teammates, Simon Pagino. This is a close-knit crew. They know how long it's been for Elio and they knew this day would come at some point. I, you know, I do have to ask you, we knew this day would come at some point, but did you? Did you start to doubt whether you'd have another win? Oh, no, I never, I never doubt. That's actually wasn't in, not even in my thoughts, especially with those guys. I have to say, um, great support, and, and special team Penske. They never gave up on me, and, and I, we've been always there. We were always good, and uh, I'm glad our peers is back. Uh, great strategy, and... Um, Man, what a day, guys. I'm telling you, this is like so cool. It's like I'm winning for the first time. <laughs> oh, boy, this is amazing. I just want to thank the Lord, obviously, uh, to give me strength, to give me power. And uh, But I have to thank the team. And Hitachi was, car was so on rails today. It's not about, you know, believe it or not believing. It's about having everything happen on the right time. We didn't put a, a, a wheel wrong, even through traffic. We didn't panic when the car was a little uh, bad. I tell you guys, we gotta keep digging. Ah, let's keep working on it. All right, his 30th win, go celebrate. He's done a lot of that already. Robin? Well, RP, you finally won at Iowa and you did it with an old man. Well, I'll tell you, I think this is our 11th or 12th time. Uh, these guys have been real tough on us here, but uh, to see that run that Elio made all day long, I think he controlled the race. We had very good pit stops, you could see that, but uh, you know, you gotta have reliability and you gotta have a guy behind the wheel that knows how to climb the fence. Here's the thing. I wrote a story yesterday that said you might be going back to three cars next year and he may be a full-time sports car driver. And he said at the end of our interview, the only way I can keep my job is to win the championship. Would that be a tough decision? Well, I don't know about that. I, I think that uh, there's a lot of speculation on what's going on here. Look, we got a big season to finish here, and we all normally announce our season at the beginning of it, not in the end. Right, but he's only one point out of the lead right now. Uh, that's terrific. I know that uh, Scott didn't have the day he wanted, but he's going to be awful tough, and great to see all four cars compete the way they did today. Good racing out there. Courtesy's there when you had to, and you're passing cars a lap down. and. I thought the official did a good job putting that red flag out. Well, we're glad to see you back because the big rumor in Elkhart Lake was you were buying a country or something and you weren't there, so everybody was nervous. No, I was at the America's Cup thinking about building a boat. <laughs> no. All right, Anders, Roger Pinsky wins at Iowa for the first time. All right, and J.R. Hildebrand, it wasn't a win for you today, but you equaled your best result in the 2011 Indy 500. How's this result feel? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, uh, I definitely think under, under some slightly different circumstances, we had a car to win out there. Um, guys made a great call. Um, to pit early and then get out in the lead at the end and try to just hustle all the way. I think, uh, you know, if we had been on kind of equal tires with 
with Elio, we might have had something for him there at the end. But, um, you know, all in all, just really excited for the Fuzzies Vodka crew to, to get on the podium here again. Um, they definitely deserved it after the weekend that we've had. And, um, you know, hopefully this, this can get us kicked off for kind of the stretch run going into the rest of the year. All right. Thanks so much. Over to you, Kevin. All right. What a story today. What a show. Elio Castroneves back in victory lane for the 30th time, and he surpasses Rick Mears on the all-time win list. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the Verizon IndyCar Series, and by Engrade Motor Oil. Make the grade.